<laughs> yes, uh, as you can see, I'm alone. There should be also Oliver here, but uh, luck of the Irish for both of us, we got sick on the same day. Uh, and I only have fever and cough and he doesn't have a voice. So today you have to only uh, see me here. Uh, so I'm going to tell you about the Estonia microbiome cohort. Uh, so if you are interested in the publication that I'm going to talk about, uh, you can just Google the name uh, from the program. This is exactly the title of uh, the publication that was just uh, a few months ago uh, published in Nature Communications. So we come from Estonia. Uh, it's a very small country in uh, northeastern Europe, and uh, there's only 1.3 million people living there. We are very proud of the 0.3 million. And uh, in Estonia, 20 years ago, uh, there was established this uh, beautiful biobank. And in the biobank, uh, we have uh, 200,000 participants. Uh, in the end of, the th uh, of this year, actually 210,000. And uh, this is a longitudinal population-based uh, adult biobank and uh, new uh, participant uh, participants get recruited uh, every year to this biobank and we have now uh, more than 20 percent of the adult population recruited so uh, since it's 20 years old uh, biobank uh, we have uh, many uh, data sets available in here uh, so we have the whole uh, genome sequencing, exomes, all the cohorts, so 210,000 have the genotype arrays done. Uh, in the, this year, we also have the NMR-based metabolomics for whole cohorts. And of course, we are in the microbiome conference, so I'm going to tell you about this uh, microbiome cohort that we established a few years ago, uh, where we have basically 2,500 individuals uh, recruited. So in this Estonian microbiome cohort, uh, we basically recruited uh, 2,500 uh, 2, 2, uh, individuals uh, from the biobank participants, and we collected additional samples from them. So they were already participants, but then they uh, participated in our project. And uh, we, we collected stool samples, oral samples, plasma samples. And this uh, article that I'm going to tell you about today, uh, we uh, analyzed the stool sample um, Meta shotgun metagenomic sequencing. Uh, and uh, currently we have uh, two uh, sequencing data sets available. So in this article, we analyzed the uh, Lumina Novasik uh, uh, sequencing data where we had uh, 30 million reads per sample. And uh, additionally, we actually have a BGI much deeper data set where we have like 60 million per reads, uh, 60 million reads per sample also available. So duplicate data sets. But uh, what we basically did was uh, we collected uh, this um, uh, questionnaire data and, uh, and uh, anthropometric measurements from these 2,500 individuals. And uh, additionally, we had this multiomic data sets. But uh, what is uh, very nice in Estonia is that we are a very digitalized nation. So basically, all... Um, health records go in are, are digitalized so uh, all the hospitals and and the doctors they put the diagnosis and uh, prescriptions and drugs and procedures into uh, electronic health records and uh, these biobank participants have agreed that we can access these as well uh, additionally what is uh, very interesting is that we can uh, call back this biobank participants so if we have a study question that we want to further look, look into in the biobank participants or also in our micro biome cohort, then we can uh, uh, call back these participants to uh, further look into some phenotypes. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about these electronic health records because this is a very valuable data source that we have. And, uh, and it really gives uh, a much more detailed data for the patient uh, or, or about the patient that uh, actually the questionnaire data usually doesn't. So in Estonia, the ICD-10 codes for diseases and the ATC codes for drugs are used. So here you can see an example of a participant uh, and, and uh, what kind of diseases this patient has and also what kind of uh, drugs this patient has been taking. So for example, uh, we can see that there was a diagnosed, uh, for example, Lyme disease, and we can see right away that, uh, for example, this uh, antibiotic amoxicillin uh, was prescribed. And what is uh, very relevant is that in addition to having uh, this diseases from the past, so for example, if the 
participant joins in uh, the uh, or gives the sample in 2017, we can still track back uh, all the diseases that the patient had since the beginning of electronic health records. And this is not it. Actually, we can also go into the future. So we can look at the incident diseases that have happened after the microbiome sample was collected. So for example, in this case, the patient was diagnosed with type uh, 2 diabetes after microbiome sample collection. And we can also see that this patient has taken metformin much later uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, so much later than they gave the sample and also when they were diagnosed. So just to move into these results that we found, so we analyzed different kind of categories of, uh, of uh, um, health parameters. So we were looking into medical procedures, uh, drugs, prevalent diseases, and dietary uh, factors and, and uh, other factors as well. And, uh, and uh, basically what we saw also that has been shown before that the most uh, uh, variance is described by the stool type and gut emptying frequency and BMI and this kind of things. Uh, but uh, what is uh, interesting here is that also that we have these diseases, again, these are all uh, not from questionnaire, but these are all analyzed uh, from the medical health records. Uh, and uh, you can see the number of, uh, of uh, um, uh, different factors that we analyze per each, uh, per each uh, category. But what is uh, interesting that we saw pop up is that actually the long-term antibiotics usage seems to have uh, this uh, very uh, relevant uh, effect on the variants. And uh, uh, we wanted to look uh, into it, uh, what is going on there. And basically, uh, we, what we did was that uh, we analyzed uh, the number of prescriptions that the uh, patient had uh, for, uh, for a long uh, uh, or 10-year period. And we excluded actually the last six months uh, usually usage from the analysis. So when usually people are making the microbiome studies, they say like, okay, uh, if the patient hasn't taken three months or three weeks or six months the antibiotics, then we should ex exclude them. But actually what we are seeing is that the if we exclude the recent usage, we are seeing a, like an accumulative effect on the microbiome. So the more the patient takes the antibiotics, we are seeing the reduction in the diversity in a long-term effect. And also the whole composition is basically shifting towards a bacteroides dominating uh, area. Uh, so the long-term antibiotic usage is actually having effect on the microbiome. And it seems to us that it might be a negative effect. Uh, so what is also relevant here is Estonians are among the lowest uh, antibiotics consumers uh, in Europe. Uh, only Netherlands is basically consuming less, but, uh, but uh, so it might be that this uh, effect is even more prevalent in the, in the other cohorts that are available. Uh, what we also did was to look at the uh, disease-specific associations that uh, are uh, occurring between the diseases, uh, and uh, we wanted to see if there is some kind of common dysbiosis. So are we seeing the same bacterial changes uh, between different diseases? And here is a heat map where in the diagonal you can see uh, uh, this uh, uh, this number is a uh, disease-specific uh, association, and here is the shared associations between different diseases. And we are seeing this kind of common dysbiosis. However, if we take into account this long-term antibiotic usage, we are actually losing a lot of these common dysbiosis associations. So antibiotics usage might explain this. So for example, we are uh, it's just here looking at the gastroesophageal reflux disease, and we see that we are actually losing most of it. And this is uh, might be also the case for irritable irritable bowel syndrome and uh, anxiety disorders. And so it's really relevant to uh, collect the long term antibiotic uh, usage data. And in the future, we want to also uh, make use of this incident diseases that we have. So currently we were looking at the prevalent diseases, but uh, for example, this uh, uh, graph was made by Oliver in the morning and we can see, for example, that we have like 90 or 60 cases, uh, so 90 here and 60 cases for different diseases that uh, actually happened after the uh, collection of the microbiome. So we want to really uh, predict the, using the microbiome the, the uh, disease happening because uh, what we usually 
when we are analyzing the diseases, we can see that actually the procedures, uh, medical procedures and the medications, they're all having an effect. So it's uh, our cohort really gives us opportunity to study the disease beforehand. So before we get any uh, drugs or uh, medication effect uh, uh, into this uh, analysis. And additional thing that we are using is uh, or seeing is that uh, the antidepressants also seem to have a similar effect as uh, as antibiotics. And uh, now we are recruiting a second time for second time for, for several antibiotics or uh, antidepressant user, users uh, to see uh, to analyze this further. So if we see a uh, disease specific uh, effect uh, or if the antidepressants have a big effect on the microbiome. So we are collecting a second time point. So with this, I want to thank uh, my team. And this is Oliver and uh, his dog who cannot uh, be here today. But uh, we are a growing team. So next time, I hope uh, I can show you a bigger picture of us. And if you're interested in the publication, this is here. So thanks a lot.